Hey, hey, good morning, family and friends. How are you doing today? I welcome you to this great day. It's a great day because we are great. It's a great day because we're here to do great things also. So I welcome you to this live broadcast. And uh, if you have time, join me. Let us spread the knowledge. Feel free to comment. Feel free to share. And, and I want to talk about very important issue today about sin. And I titled this, Your Sin Will Expose God. If you believe in God, your sin will expose God. And um, what is the reason, or what is the main reason people go to church or people say they believe in Jesus? Sin. They lie to us that Jesus you know, the, the whole world have sinned through the sin of Adam. Then God, well, since he cannot fix the world he created, he cannot fix the people he created. And instead of even forgiving their sins, or he said, no, let me kill my son. Then he sent his son to die for the world. Then um, he said that if you don't believe in that son, you know, your sin remains. But if you believe in him, you're forgiven, right? Okay, so. If it's true, that's what the Bible says, and that's why you see many people believing in Jesus. They say, the only way you are sin, the only thing that can wash away your sin is the blood of Jesus. Wash away, yet it never come to pass. How, how long will the blood of Jesus wash away this sin? This sin remain in this world, but the truth is this. There's no such thing as sin. Sin is... A idea that the church created, the Christianity created, religion created, both in Israel, every religion have what they call sin. In other words, if you don't go as they want, if you don't go as their God want, you are committing sin against that God. But the truth is this, sin is, there is no such thing as sin. Sin does not exist. What exists is right and wrong. So you either right or you wrong. If you do the right thing, you know. If you do the wrong thing, you know. So and you don't need anyone to tell you when you're doing the right thing. Then when it when it, when it comes to right and wrong, every every land or every people have what they say is right and what is wrong. What is right in some land may be wrong in another land. So it depends. So what is the law of the land where you are living may be different from whatever is the law of the land in another place. So you can't say, oh, because I've lived in America, I'm an American citizen, so if I go to Africa, uh, it's the same law that applies there. Or if you go to China, it's the same law. No. Every land have their specific laws, you know, which you must obey. If you are living there, whether you are a stranger or citizen, you have to obey the law of the land, which is very important. It's better to obey the law of the land than to obey the law of God. Because that God does not exist and that God cannot do you anything. The only people that can punish you is people like you. who are, You are fellow human beings. No God can punish you. No devil can punish you. No Satan can punish you. No evil spirit can punish you. And if there is anyone that will punish you for anything, it is your fellow human being. There is no God that can punish religious leaders and all these evil leaders in the world. They know that. That's why they can do anything to people. They can kill because they know no God can punish them. Imagine it. If God punishes people for doing wrong, has, have you seen a God punish the white people for what they did to Africans or to Americans, what they did to the white in Americans, what they did to the, the Indians and the Africans in America? No, you, no God is punishing them. All that God will punish you is nonsense. It's the word from a weak person. Because you don't, you can't handle it. You can't deal with them. He said, God will punish you. You see people come and keep it. He said, God will punish them. God is not punishing anybody. If there is anyone that can punish anybody, it is your fellow human being. So, your sin will expose your God. If that God exists, He's supposed to fix you. Uh, when we, most of us that grew up uh, in Christianity and know the Bible, most of us that have studied the Bible, especially those that have eaten the Bible as I did, and it became part of you, truly, that you can tell what is in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation without you opening it. But for the sake of those that we say, whoa, whoa, it's not in the Bible, because Bible still have great influence over the lives of our people, especially in Africa. If you read your Bible, right, 
in John chapter 1, verse 29, he said, when, Jesus, when, when John saw Jesus coming, he said, Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. So, because they created the sins of the world in Adam, then they created Jesus to take the sins away. So, the mistake they make there is, if Jesus uh, came to take away the sin, in other words, he must have taken it away since they said he died for your sin. We are on the cross. And on that cross, according to John chapter 19 verse 30, Jesus said what? He cried what? It is finished. Whatever reason why God sent Jesus into the world, Jesus finished it on the cross. You say he came to take away the sins of the world according to John chapter 1 verse 29. Okay, Jesus has taken it away and he himself cried, it is finished, it is ended, it is over. It can never be counted anymore, it can never be done anymore, that's what it means. It is, it is finished, it is taken away. It is no longer there. It cannot have effect on, over any, anybody. It cannot have power over anybody. But guess what? About 2,000 years ago, right, that Jesus Christ died on the sin. Or, I mean, on the cross for the sins of the whole world. Sins still in the world. And people still committing that sin. You see what is going on in Roman Catholic Church? Where the bishops and the priests are... Um, molesting children in the in the church, where they say they are doing in the name of Jesus, doing all those escramento in Latin, in Latin, deceiving themselves, saying that they will marry why they are fucking the 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 sisters and the and the norms and the children that are coming there in the name they are going to meet some holy men of God. But you see, sin is still there. You see the sins, Roman Catholic, uh, other churches, they participated in um, in what is called crusaders, killing people. It's, it's sin to kill people. Even if when they offend you, Jesus said you should forgive them. Jesus said forgive, right? And the Bible says forgive others as Christ, even as Christ forgive you. You believe that Jesus said on the cross, Father forgive them, for they know not what they do. So what, why are you still... Saying you believe in Jesus, you 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 you, you in, engage in uh, crusaders. Some crusaders that many of you are saying crusade today, you don't know what it means. Crusaders they went up about killing people, killing people that, <laughs> that killing people like that, that uh, it means nothing. Also Inquisition, every every part of Christianity participated in it, except the new modern Christianity, which is uh, Pentecostal churches. But all these evangelicals, Roman Catholic, Anglican, all of them participated in Inquisition, especially in Africa. They were killing people, in, taking people's things by force for not believing. And also among the Christians, you see fight among them. They still commit sin. But about 2,000 years ago, Jesus said it is finished. What is finished? The word of Jesus is empty. This is one thing that will expose that God you believe in, the Jesus you believe in. The issue of sin. This is one of the issues that took me out of the church. That make me stop going to church. Although I was still a Christian. But one of the things that make me know was. I'm not going to this church. I'm no longer going to this church. This is one of the reasons. Because if God is holy. And where you call the house of God is holy. So you're supposed to be holy. But every day. Every every week, every month, every year, you you still committing that sin. You need them praying for that sin. You pray against that sin in your house. You pray against that sin in place you call the house of God. God cannot fix that fix problem uh, sin problem. If God cannot fix your Almighty God and He exists, but He cannot fix your sin problem, what make Him your God? What make Him Almighty? People that make phone, like this iPhone, if it has any problem, the people that made it can fix it. But this one, you are own sin, God cannot fix it, although they say that his son already said it is finished. Yet you are, you are, you are suffering. Like you take your car to a mechanic store to fix. Your mechanic said this is the problem. 
I have diagnosed this car and this is the problem. Just go and buy me this pass, I will fix it. You bring the pass, the mechanic fix it. Right? Okay, you start your car and move. You just drive away from the shop. You're not just for, boom, the same problem occurred. And you went back again, the mechanic say it is the same part. Go and buy another one. You go and buy another one for him to fix. Will you do that? No. You will say you like person like me, you will hear my voice. All the birds in the air will hear my voice while I am screwing that guy, while I am shouting and yelling at him. No, he have to be fixed. But this is what we are doing in the name of God in religion. You believe that God can forgive your sin. You believe that God has forgiven your sin, but you see yourself still committing that sin. They tell you that masturbation, masturbation is sin. Okay, you have been praying for masturbation to stop. Sometimes, as I used to as a Christian, you wish that you cut off your penis. Like, God, make your penis not to have erection anymore. You don't want to have any sex with any woman. You don't, have to, you don't want to have a sexual urge desiring to have a woman to have sex with. Especially you that used to have sex before you said you are now born again Christian. You know that war, you know that struggle you are having in your house that makes you always praying, praying, I want this to go down. I don't want to look after any woman because you read in your Bible, they said, like Job, you say, if I look unto another woman, let my eye go, but nonsense. Unless you are sick, but if you are, if you are active, if you are strong like myself, you must be having sexual urge, unless you have problem, or you are too old to have it. I don't know about old people, but I still see it's something years old man still pumping. No problem. The wife keep running away from him, but he's still active. So, if your God exists and is almighty, why can't he fix your, your, your sin problem, your masturbation problem, your lust problem, your fornication problem, or whatever sin that your church created, or whatever you say is sin, why can't your God fix it? Even when Jesus said that looking after, uh, looking at a woman and lusting after her in the heart, he said it's adultery. Why can't your God fix that sin in you? But you keep praying, asking for forgiveness, because they find that you, 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 you will know that you are, the blood of Jesus cannot cleanse any sin. So they ask you, you will confess. If you confess, he is just unfaithful to forgive you. If you say you have no sin, you have, let's read it and see the lie these people are talking. How can God for, forgive somebody? And you say the person that now you are justified just as if you have not sinned. And hear what they said in uh, 1 John chapter 1. You can't talk about sin without talking about First John chapter 1 because that's where especially born again Christians go. Roman, all this other uh, uh, part of Christianity like Roman Catholic, Anglican, they don't go to First John. But when you're talking about, uh, about sin, oh, the, the born again Christians like First John a lot. Now let me start reading from verse 7. He said, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Cleanses us. When you clean something, it's no longer there. So if Jesus cleanses us from all sin, who brought sin again? You say, Satan? God allow him to bring sin, bring sin again after Jesus cleanses you. First, Jesus removed the sin on the cross. The sin continued. Then he said that now the blood of Jesus is available to be cleansing that sin again. Cleansing all sin, all from all sin. See verse, verse, uh, verse, verse 8, he said, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. What do you mean? So if I don't have any sin and said I don't have no sin, I have what? I have um, deceived myself? And this is where they always are, oh, you cannot deny sin. Who said that? They say you are like a fish in the water. You cannot, de you cannot deny water. Who said that? If the fish is in the land, it's not in the water. You say, no, you are a fish in the water. You are, you, uh, the fish is no longer in the water. And if God is almighty, is able to make fish to live in the land, no longer in the water. But they say, if you say you have no sin, you deceive yourself, and the truth is not in you. Verse, verse, verse 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins 
and what? To cleanse us from all unrighteousness. When we that cleansing be done, every day cleansing, every day cleansing, with all the power you say this God possess, hear what verse 10 said, he said, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar. You can make God a liar. And he's almighty. You say he's your God. You cannot, if you cannot uh, judge God, if you cannot condemn God, but he said that you make God a liar, you can make God a liar. Of course, God is a liar. If you read Genesis chapter 2 and chapter 3, you will find out that God is a liar right there. It is not my word. It is there in your Bible. God said the day you eat this fruit, you will truly die. They ate it, they did not die. Then he get upset and drove them out of the garden because they said, oh, they are going to eat the other fruit and live forever. God is a liar. He said, if you say that you have not sinned, how can they make you claim you have sinned? No, I have not sinned. They say, no, you sinned in Adam. No, my mother did not conceive me in sin. He conceived me in, uh, in bed through sexual intercourse with my father. Not in iniquity. I was not brought forth in iniquity in any sin. I was brought forth in hospital. That's how my mother brought me forth. Some of us were born in the house, in the barn, in the farm, in many places. None of us was, none of us have sinned. None of us were born in sin. Say we make him a liar and his word is not in us. You don't need his word in you. They are the one that put that word in you. The thing that makes you a sinner is the word that the missionary is planted in you. If you allow them to plant that same word in you, that word brings sin. What brings sin into the word? The word of God. The word our ancestors know not what is called sin. Until they put it there and say, this is sin. Adam ate fruit, you are a sinner. Your mother conceived you in sin. My mother never conceived me in sin. Because... It is a natural thing says it's beautiful. That's how we, 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 we give birth to people like us. It is not a sin. So they make all this up. But if this God exists, why are you still suffering from that sin? Why that blood of Jesus cannot, that blood of Jesus cannot do you nothing? They say the blood cannot lose its power. Which power? The blood of Jesus cannot cleanse you from your sin. The blood of Jesus cannot, you'll be uncovering yourself with the, in, in, in the blood of Jesus. Yet, mosquito is still sucking your blood. Evil is still happening to you. The blood of Jesus cannot protect you. Look at what happened in my village yesterday. Three people just died. Maybe more will still die. It depends on, on their, on their situation. Everybody in my village is Christian, especially people that oh, you see in that market. They were there doing their business. This lorry fell break as usual in Nigeria because poor maintenance is will keep people more in Nigeria than the normal accident. Poor maintenance. Poor poor driver need money to take care of his children. Maybe to go fix go and fix this. Say let me manage to go this trip and come back. I will raise more money to take care of my children and all that. He fell break and killed three people. The blood of Jesus, those, those people at least they prayed. If they didn't pray that day, they prayed before the beginning of this year. They went to Mass, especially most of us uh, Roman Catholic members there or Anglican. So by the end of the, uh, by the end of last year, when they are entering the new year, they pray that they will not die. The blood of Jesus covered them. They shot all the amen. But see three of them just died. And some of them are in the hospital. I saw some pictures, I know them. But I didn't know if anyone that died there is related to me. I'm from my village. But so they are my brethren. They are my people. They are my family. But what I'm saying is this. The blood of Jesus cannot cover us Africans. Blood of Jesus will only cover your eyes. You cannot see your future. The blood of Jesus will cover your eyes. You cannot ask questions. The blood of Jesus will cover your eyes. You will be afraid of falling. Afraid of cause, afraid of cause, afraid of evil. That's what the blood of Jesus can do. There's no power in the blood of Jesus. If there is power in the blood of Jesus, you will not be afraid of the elders in your village. You say there are evil elders, they are killing people, they are doing this, they are doing you are you run away from your village. What happened to the blood of Jesus? You see a native doctor, you cannot go close to the native doctor. Oh, he's a he's a, he's a servant of Satan. I don't want him to poison me. I don't want him to kill me. What happened to the blood of Jesus? 
the sin, your sin will expose that God does not exist. Because if God exists, he will stop you from sinning. Your sin exposes God. When you say your God is almighty, but he cannot stop you from sinning. You know, you know the, the, the normal question they, they ask in Jeremiah chapter 32 verse 27. Right? Uh, God say, I am the Lord God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me? You know, you echo it as a believer. Nothing is too hard for God. Nothing is too hard for God. Nothing is impossible for God. Then in the same Jeremiah chapter 20, 32, verse 17, Jeremiah said, Our Lord God, you make heaven and earth. There is nothing too hard for you. Just like every Christian, every believer we say about God, there's nothing God cannot do. The truth is this. God cannot stop you from committing that sin your religion say is sin. God cannot stop you from committing any sin. You are saying we expose God. I want you to do one thing today. As I asked you to do about Titan by the beginning of this year. That if you are Titan, if you don't become richer than the richest man in the world by Titan today. According to uh, Malachi chapter 3 verse 10 and uh, uh, to 12. If you don't become that richest today by Titan. No. That you should stop Titan, stop going to church, stop following that God. He does not exist. Stop being afraid. That God is dead. He's supposed to be dead in your life. He cannot stop you from sinning. So test him today. The same Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. God said, test me in this. It is in your Bible. Don't tell me you cannot test God. People tested God. Gideon tested God. Right? In your Bible. Many people test. I think Samson parents also tested him. Gideon also. Uh, Gideon tested him. Um, was Jephthah tested him or something like that. Many people tested God in your Bible or some people. So why are you afraid of testing God? Even when God say, "Test me in this," is there Malachi chapter three verse ten? It's not only testing God in Titan. Test God in your sin. Can God forgive? Can, can God forgive and take away your sin? God cannot do that. If God can do that, you won't have to struggle with your sin. That sin you are struggling. I will no longer lie. I will not. Lie. But you see, you cannot succeed in your business without lying. But you see, Roman Catholic Church, they are smart. That's why you see most Roman Catholic members they are prosperous than any other denomination in Christianity except the new ones that are coming up. But when you put Anglican and Roman Catholic Church, these two factions that always fight, you see that Roman Catholic people are doing better than Anglican in everything because they can lie. Anglican people, they are too afraid of the, of the wrath of God. They carry the Bible in their head like, you know, they have, God is their father and he will kill them if they lie. But Roman Catholic member, we lie from Monday to Thursday. On Friday, we go for what? Confession. Then Saturday, they go party. Sunday, they go to church. Monday to Thursday again in their business place. They lie, they lie, they lie. They can kill to make money. They can lie to make money. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, nonsense. That in that area, I give Roman Catholic Church, you know, hundred percent good. They are good in that area. They know how to sin and go and confess their sin. They keep doing it every Friday. They go for confession. You, they keep going for confession. Their God cannot forgive their sin once and for all. What they say, Jesus will die for our sins once and for all. So why are we still committing sin? If you say, oh, because I don't believe in Jesus, I don't believe in God. That's why I'm still committing sin. Hello. Roman Catholic Church bishop that are committing sin. All the pastors in every church is committing sin, robbing people, fornicating, all that, because they created that sin. That's why they, you cannot stop it. It's not any god that created it. Anything you call sin was created by religion. They say no, dumb. If you do it, this will happen. It will not happen unless they do it themselves. Then when something happened to you by chance or by time, they said, oh, it is the judgment of God. It's not. It is not any God judging you. I say, test God today. You have to test that God. Malachi chapter 3 verse 10 says, test me in this. You have to test this God. If this God can take away your sin, no, he exists. But he cannot. 
They only make you believe He has forgiven you. He has cleansed you. Just the same way they do in prayer. They tell you if you pray, believe you have received. And you will receive. And you say you have been believing. You have received. You never receive anything. They keep taking your money, keep lying to you. Or oh, maybe it's your sin. What sin? Why is your sin greater than your God? If your God is almighty, why will your sin stop him from answering your prayers? As Isaiah chapter 59, 1 and 2 say that the hand of God is not sure that he will deliver. The air is not raw that you can hear, but it's your iniquity. Which iniquity? Which sin is greater than your God? Which wrongdoing is greater than your God? You say you don't want to touch your newborn baby because he, 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 shit, he shit all over the place. No! The she, your baby, she, you see some, oh man, you know, if, if you have uh, taken care of a uh, little uh, newborn baby or young, uh, little babies, you know what I'm talking about. Their shit is nothing to you. You don't say, hmm, this thing's made by, no, because their baby, you don't care. Ooh, you don't want anything to harm them. So imagine you are almighty God. I want you to test God in this today. If your God exists, if your God is almighty, almighty, test him. If that God can stop you from committing that sin, what is that sin you have been committing? You know you have been committing it secretly. You say you're doing it unknowingly. No, you know. There's nothing you are doing you don't know that you're about to do it before you do it. You know. So, test God in this. I'm not asking you to leave God now, right? Yeah, so, I'm not asking you to leave God, but test Him. Then, when He fell, or when He fails, because I know He will fail, Will you have that? Will you summon that courage to leave that God alone? I know it is an idol. We don't supposed to be worshiping idol. We don't supposed to be worshiping anybody, anything. We don't supposed to be praying to any imaginary being. We don't supposed to worship anybody, living or dead. We are supposed to love those that exist. Those that doesn't exist, you leave them. Stop. Communicating with the dead. The dead knows nothing. It's in your Bible. And the dead cannot do anything. Like That's why the God you believe in, he cannot do anything. But if you say your God can do anything, test him in this. According to Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. Remember what they used to catch us. They say, your sin will find you out. They always quote Numbers chapter 32 verse 23. They always quote it. Everyone that go to preach, your sin will find you out. Your sin will find especially the deeper life. Oh, they love Numbers chapter 32 verse 23 a lot. Your sin will find you out. They use King James Version to preach it. You can't go deeper life retreat or deeper life convention where they are talking about things of this world. They will always tell you, just like they use uh, prepare to meet thy Lord. They keep preparing. Their Lord is not coming. They keep preparing. That's the way they use Numbers 32 23. Your sin will find you out. Which sin will find? Your sin will find God out, not you. If your God loves you, He's supposed to keep you from sinning. And you know, when I, I, I was a pastor, I always close my administration with a. Uh, uh, Jude verse 24. That's Jude chapter 1 verse 24. I love that. Say to him who is able to keep you from falling. And to present you before his glorious presence. Without fault and with great, with great joy. To him the only wise God. Be all the glory. Majesty and power. Now and forever. That's crap. God is not able to keep you from falling. You will keep falling. If you don't look you will fall. Wake up my people. That sin you are struggling with does not exist. It is the word they sowed inside you. They said, add and sin, and you came into you. Don't believe that. You are mad. Your parents conceive you in sin. It's a lie. You are not a sinner. You don't need a savior. If, you, if there is any savior that exists, it's supposed to be you, because you can save people that are in, in trouble. You can do that. And this is what I want to share with us today. Remember, I don't struggle with sin anymore because my sin is supposed that there is no God, invisible God that controls anything. My sin is supposed to me that the blood of Jesus cannot cleanse your sin. And since I found out there is no such thing as, as sin, I only obey the law of the land. I don't care about the law of any God. If that God is this, let him come. And give me the, the law himself. God has not given us any law. Men make all laws. Everywhere. There is no law in heaven. 
coming down for you. Just like there is no God or Jesus in heaven coming down for you. I want you to wake up, my people. This is a serious thing because until you deal with this nonsense they call sin, you will keep being afraid. You will keep being confused. You will think God will come and kill you because of your sin. Anything they call sin, they made it up. Not any God. Any land you are living in, check their rules, I mean their laws. That is what you must obey, not the law of any God. The people that we throw in the jail are the people in authority, not any God. So do the right thing. Be a good citizen. That's all that matters. Do good to all. Don't do any bad thing. Pinch yourself before you pinch other person. All right? Do good to yourself and to everyone. That's how we're supposed to live and enjoy this life. Thank you for always being there. Peace.